Hey guys, this is the boss coder for Epker C Sharp Tutorial 21. And I gotta tell you, using that other screen recorder was a pain in the rear. Um, it was actually. The audio and video were not syncing, so I had to use something called Virtual Dub or V Dub to fix that. And it was not working out for me. I mean, I, I was doing it fine, but it, it was. Too much effort just for enhanced audio. Um, it's this hypercam I'm using is actually still going to do the this. It's going to do the same audio videos out of syncness when I do my trigonometry tutorials, just because I'm recording a uh, 1024 by or by 768, I believe, rather than just 640 by 480. But for some reason, the cam studio I was using was doing that weird like audio video out of sync thing even on just a simple 640 by 480 recording area. So I'm going to downgrade when I'm doing my C Sharp tutorials and probably upgrade for my um, trigonometry ones. So anyways, let's get started. First thing you we're going to do is we're going to create a variable to count. And today we're learning about the stack, by the way, which is another part of recursion and it's something that blew my mind when I first learned about it. it was really the only thing that surprised me when I was learning programming was this whole stack business and I'm not sure if this is only um, applicable to C Sharp and Java or if it's actually in C++ and C and all that stuff too but um, it's definitely in Java and C Sharp and I say and I'm, and I'm wondering whether or not it's in like C++ and stuff because um, Java has its own like library thing that's it's a little different than the other programming languages and the stack is actually something that is kind of strange for that and the thing that you need to remember about the stack is that it follows the rule of LIFO, L -I -F -O, which stands for last in first out the easiest way to just think about this is just like if you have a stack of papers you put the first one on bottom then the other one on top of that and on top of that and so on and so on until you get to like a hundred piled papers piled on top of each other now when you're gonna start unloading those papers you're not gonna start with the one at the bottom and start undoing it you're gonna start with the one at the top so basically you stack up so let's say you count so you put paper numbered one then two then three then four then five then six all the way up to ten you're gonna start with ten and go backwards um, so it's kind of like a, I guess a roller coaster, if, if you want to think about it like that. It's, that's a strange analogy, but I guess you could think about that uh, if you think as each paper is a different level and you have to come down the same way you came up, just in reverse. Um, so then that's that about the, the whole LIFO thing. And this is basically what the whole idea of the stack revolves around. So let's go ahead and I'm going to write... Um, some code for a method that I have not actually created yet, and I'm going to go ahead and read the line so that it will not close out on us whenever I um, whenever I run this. Count it says the name count does not exist in the current context. Well, you've convinced me to create it. Public static void count um, int. Let's just go ahead and use a again. Okay. Now what we're going to first do is, um, comps. first thing we need to do is curly braces, duh, okay, um, mm, oh, that's right, it doesn't automatically create the other curly brace for me, why is that putting that over there, that is really confusing, okay, um, what was I going to, oh yeah, console.writeline, and I want to go ahead and print out a equals, plus a, whoa, that is new, um, on the stack. This is go how I'm going to tell, uh, what? Uh, what? Do I have too many curly braces somewhere? Do, 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 do. No, I don't, what is going on? Public static, void. oh, oh, duh, rookie mistake, I put semicolon after my method console.writeline a equals plus a on the stack okay 
And now we're going to say if a is less than, let's just say 20. Then we're going to call count again. We're going to call this method, and we're going to send in a plus 1. Now, if I just put an a, then this thing would run forever now. And now what I want to do is just to make this look neater so I can tell the difference between my on the stack and off the stack sections, I'm just going to copy this twice so I can get a little double space going in my code or in my output. Console.write line. And we're basically going to do the same thing except we're going to say a equals plus a off the stack. Let me put a little space here too. Okay. So basically what is going to happen is it's going to print out a equals 1 on the stack, then it's going to go through and make it a equals 2 on the stack, a equals 3 on the stack, etc. And then we're going to skip two lines after a equals 20. And then what I thought was going to happen the very first time I ever saw something like this, I didn't know what, I didn't know about the whole stack thing, like I knew about the stack, but I didn't know that it actually was like this in C Sharp and Java. Um, once you print this out, it's actually not going to just print out 20. It, is it going to print out 19 or 20? I'm not sure. We'll have to see. I haven't gone through the whole loop thing yet. But what this is going to do is it's going to print off the first number on the stack, then it's going to go through and print out the second number, and the third number, and the fourth number, all the way up until you get to the very last one, which should just be 1. And it will print it in this reverse order, because when you go through this whole recursive thing through to here, it just keeps on putting the numbers on the stack and it doesn't get rid of them until after it gets through this whole loop sequence here. And then once you get here, it basically just starts unloading them for you and shoving them in your face. And again, in the LIFO, LIFO, last in, first out order. Um, so when we run this, it should... Whoa. Whoa. Oh, of course. Um, I put the double spaces, so... Um, A equals 1 on the stack. A equals all the way up to 20 on the stack. Um, and right, it'll count up to 20 because we did the uh, printing before getting to the if, if statement. Then we go to console.write line, and then once it gets to printing A, it'll actually go through the whole, this section here, over and over. So that's why there's a double space in between each 20 off the stack, 19, 18, 17, 16. So let me go ahead and get rid of these, just so we can actually read this for what it is. Oh, that's right, it's still running, I can't edit it. Duh, okay. <clears throat> now, it should, okay, A equals 1 here, I can't highlight it, through 20 on the stack, then off the stack, and it's basically just going in backwards order all the way up to 1. And that's how the stack works, people. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, I can't think of any reason why you'd want to use the stack off the top of my head. I'm, I'm sure there's probably something. But um, basically, the main thing for me showing you this is just so that you can avoid it and so that you're not, like, get your mind blown whenever something like this happens because you don't know what is going on with the stack. And so this should prevent any mind eruptions or brain matter oozing out of the sides of your head. Um, from something happening to you while you're in the middle of a program. And um, so anyways, I'm not sure what we're going to do next time. I haven't planned that one yet. I may do a couple of trigonometry tutorials after this, or I may just go ahead and do another C-sharp tutorial if I find something that I need to do. Um, I'd like to start going over just like classes and all the methods in them like I did with the math class. I'd like to do the, con the rest of the console class and I'd like to do the string class as well. And I'm sure there's a bunch of other classes that I'd like to do. Um, and I won't, might just actually do a tutorial over um, algorithms, which is not really something unique to C-sharp, but it is used in everything. There's a Fibonacci sequence one that uses the awesome array, which is actually easier in C-sharp than it is in Java because you can actually change the size of the array. Thank goodness. Um, anyways, and you can do it with an array of size 3, but whatever. Uh, um, 
let's see and there's like the bubble sort and the linear sort and the binary search thing which are really neat and um, used a lot for searching for things um, so I may I may do some of that eventually but I gotta think about it because I don't know that stuff all that well I actually have to look it up first so anyways um, for now uh, that's and the end of this tutorial on the stack I will see you guys later